Hi, today we're going to talk about this guy, the GFX 100S and the 110mm and the Fujinon 18mm f1.4 that was recently released. I've used these for a wedding and I'm going to tell you more in just a few seconds. So this video is going to be broken down into different sections. First we're going to talk about the GFX 100S and the 110mm for a wedding, the pros and the cons. Then we're going to tackle the Fujinon 18mm f1.4, same thing here, the pros and the cons. I'm then going to go into the day of the wedding, breaking it down by sections, the different important parts that I shoot during the day and we're finally going to go into how I grade my photos and the different settings that I use on my cameras. So first, let's go with the pros of the GFX 100S for a wedding. Obviously an important point here is the, the depth of field, the quality of the images and the rendering of the images. The photos with this camera are just spectacular. Um, they look really good, they look full of colors, they're vibrant, um, the depth of field can be really shallow but at the same time it really gives you that medium format quality on your photos and that is something that is a luxury to be able to bring this camera with you all day long for a wedding. Of course it is 110 megapixels, I don't run after megapixels, I'm not chasing them, I don't actually care if I have 25 or if I have 110, that's definitely not why I would go for this camera, but the fact of having them means that if the bride and groom want to, um, for example, make a poster or they want to print something of a larger size, they're not going to lose that much quality and it's going to look extremely good. So that is again a pro. One thing that you need to think about when you're going to shoot a wedding with such a big camera is the fact that it is big. I mean, this thing is, uh, is, is big and bulky compared to my little X-T3, for example, right here. But it is not big enough to dislocate a shoulder, if you see what I mean. So if some of you had that question, uh, that's the answer. I don't think it's too heavy to bring it around the whole day. This camera has IBIS, it has a stabilized sensor such as the GFX 100 and that is amazing, that is great because it is such a big sensor. I remember the 50R and the 50S, those were two beefs that I had a, on those cameras. The fact that the sensor was so uh, big and didn't have IBIS, so if you go under, I don't, I don't even remember, but I think it was under 250th of a second, you started to see shakiness if you're not on the tripod. And for a wedding, you can't have that. Now let's talk about the, I would call them limitations, not even cons, because they're not really cons. One of them is the size of the files. They're just huge. They're, they're just humongous. And when you upload on your website for the album, which I share with the bride and groom, and then they then share it with their guests, um, you, I only have 40 megs max uh, with Wix. I use Wix for my website. The file size can go up to 140 megs for the raw files, and I shoot um, small JPEG, so it's about 8 megs per photo, so it can go up to around 150 megs per shot, per frame. And if you think about it, doing a wedding, you shoot a lot of photos, so you also need to think with having big files to handle. So that, that is a bit of a limitation. The native aspect ratio is 4x3 versus 3x2, which is what I normally use on my Fuji cameras. Um, that is not a big deal if you're going to shoot with two medium format cameras on each side during the wedding day, that is fine. Um, you're not going to see any difference, but in my situation, I had to crop a little bit and change the aspect ratio when I was editing the XT3 files and the GFX files. Back on the form factor of this guy here I'm going to show you. So we have the GFX 100S here and we have the XT3 right here. So just body wise you, you can see here the size of it, um, it, it, is, it is smaller, it definitely is smaller in, on all aspects. Uh, same for the lens, if I take here the 56mm and you compare them uh, here it would go like this. You can see that the lens, which is right here, even with the hood, is as big as the GFX 110. So yes, we're talking two kilos for the combo GFX 100S and lens, uh, and one, less than one kilo for the XT3 and the 56mm f1.2. So that is something to consider. My shoulder did feel it. It was not so bad, but it is heavier. So think with that. When you take a photo, this having a bigger sensor means that it takes a little bit longer to take the photo. In fact, when you hear the sound it makes, it is slower. It is very muffled, 
I, I give that to Fuji, but it is slower than my X-T3, for example. So I had to think with that. When I take several photos in a row, it, it tends to be a bit slower. And for a wedding, that can be a problem, especially when you need to take photos rapidly and you need to catch the right moment. You cannot have any slows or have anything that slows you down. So I worked my way around that because I am not a fast shooter. I like to shoot specific photos at specific times. And over the years, I improved myself on that regard. And I know how to shoot photos and I know which photos to shoot at what time. So this was not a problem for me. In terms of battery, which is a separate note, it's not a pro or a con, it's just a note on the battery itself. It uses the same batteries as found on the X-T4, um, so that is great. I shot 360 photos during the day, which is not a lot, but I had around 50% battery left. So that's the autonomy that you're gonna get on this battery. All right, now that we spoke about the GFX, let's tackle the 18mm f1.4. So this guy here surprised me in many, many ways. For close-up photography, meaning if you want to go close to your subject, this lens is amazing. I found it great because you can really get a lot of stuff in your frame and you can really tell a story and it gives an interesting field of view. I just found it great. You can get a great uh, point of view and you can really tell a story with your photos. They improved this uh, lens. You can check my review up here uh, that compares the older model and this model. Um, but what they did is they added a stop of light so it can now open maximum at f1.4. That is great because when there's low light situations, especially on the wedding day, when for example you go to the hall and there's very limited amount of light at night, um, that extra stop does make a difference. You do need to make sure though that uh, you pinpoint and you nail your focus on the subject that you want to have in focus because don't forget that it is f1.4 and that is quite wide and the, the depth of field is going to be quite shallow. The autofocus is faster on this lens than the previous generation. Uh, I said this many times but I don't particularly care about autofocusing speed. That's not what I'm looking for for a wedding because um, for example the f1.2, the 56mm here, um, it works just fantastically. It is not fast as fast as the 50 f1 but it does the job, it does it great and the, the final images are just fantastic. The rendering of the images is just great. Same for this guy. Yes, it is faster on autofocusing but to be honest when I take my photos I don't really particularly see a difference. One important thing here is the fact that this is almost silent, like it's pretty much you, you, nearly silent, you just don't hear it. So when you're focusing on your subjects, for example in the church, because I took a lot of photos in the church at the, in this past wedding, um, you're not going to hear the focusing of the lens. And when you get real close to your bride and groom, you don't want to hear the sound of the focusing. So that is a big pro and that is something that I'm enjoying a lot with this lens. In terms of size, okay, so yes, I said this is twice as big as the older version of the 18mm. Um, this is big, it's bulkier, blah, blah, blah. Yes, but look here. If you check the size of the 56mm f1.2, they are exactly the same size, pretty much. <clears throat> Which means, in turn, that when you put it on your strap, and I, and I usually go around with an X-T2 and an X-T3 on each side, um, you will have the same exact weight on both sides. It's gonna balance, it's gonna feel great. And in fact, it did feel great, even though I shot with the GFX 110 at this wedding, but it felt great. Also, when you just, when you hold it in your hand, it's just the right grip, the right amount uh, of grip and weight and size and everything. So I have nothing to say about the size and I think it is great. So there, that was my pros and I, I I've tried to find cons, I swear to God, I did try to find cons, but I couldn't find them. In fact, this is probably going to replace my 23 mil, which I'm going to ditch for weddings. Um, so there, I said it, it's the first time I say this, but I think this 18 mil is amazing. By the way, um, I got asked recently by some of you uh, if the 16 mil makes a big difference versus the 18 mil in terms of um, uh, the focal length and uh, field of view. For weddings, I don't know. To be honest, I need to shoot with the 16mm f1.4 and I'll do that on my next wedding so I can tell you guys if it actually makes a difference and if it does, which one is best in my opinion for shooting weddings. Alright, so now let's tackle the different parts of the wedding and which moments of the day are important to me when I'm shooting a wedding. First we have the preparation of the bride and groom, uh, the decoration and the preparation of the hall. Those are the, the first things you do when you arrive to a wedding day. So I 
use the GFX 100S to shoot those photos. Um, didn't notice any difference from my X-T3 with my 56mm f1.2, which is the usual combo that I use for these type of shots. I did not notice a difference. Um, I'm, as I'm going through this video, you've noticed that I'm posting photos, so you can see that, um, that I shot pretty much the same way as I normally shoot. The one limitation with this is I didn't want to shoot too much um, or too many photos of the preparations because I wanted to be able to have enough space on my memory cards. I know this sounds dumb, but uh, the files are huge, as I mentioned. They're huge, 150 megs for one frame is about four or five times the size of an X-T3 photo. So that means you, you need to watch out. I, either you get big SD cards. I had two 128 gigs SD cards, but I used them as a backup. So that's the space I have, and I have a limited amount of SD cards, which is a bit of a problem when you're using this type of system. Uh, on the other hand, the 18mm f1.4, once again, was just amazing, it was sexy, it worked great, and I really could capture some great moments and get exactly the amount uh, of stuff that I needed to show in the photo captured. Then we have the church slash ceremony. For that, same thing, the GFX 100S is very silent. In fact, some people came to see me after the ceremony and they told me, hey, we could not hear you taking photos. You were basically silent. And it's true. Um, this camera, I found it more muffled and more silent than my X-T3 is. Uh, the 18mm f1.4 was particularly good for tight spaces. Wow, there's like a fly flying around here. Anyway, it is particularly good for tight spaces because you can really get close to, to, to su your subject and you can take as much as you want into the frame without it being wide angle. Because I also go around with my X-T2 uh, as a backup camera, but I also have it with the 10 to 24 mm 4 if I have to take some wide angle shots. Uh, I did not need to do this <clears throat> in this wedding because the 18 mm was just perfect. All right, for the reception, so appetizers and food and chit chat. That's how I call this section of the wedding. Um, this is a little bit more in your face. Uh, the size of this camera, the GFX 100S, is bigger. Um, so guests tend to notice me more with this camera. That is a pro and a con. It is a con, obviously, because you're not so candid, because people can see you, so you, you know. But the pro, though, is the fact that they're looking at you and they see you. So sometimes I was taking photos and someone would actually look at me and that would give some, you know, some close-up communication and interaction with the subject and, and give you an interesting photo. I actually like that a lot. I normally don't get that with my 56 um, f1.2 because it's so small people don't even notice that I'm there. And since it's such a, such a long focal uh, length, I can stay pretty far away from my subject, so they don't even notice I'm taking a photo. Um, the 18 mil was great for taking larger groups and for uh, being able to capture more in my frame. Again, I, I compared to the 23 mil f2, that's the usual lens I use for weddings, and I find this to have a little bit more to show, which makes the whole difference, honestly. Then we have the groups, group shots. Um, for groups, I very often nowadays use my uh, drone, either the Phantom 4 or the Mavic Air 2S, um, and I take the entirety of everyone with that. So that is done. Then I like to shoot uh, individual groups. So I used the 18 mil for that, and needless to say, it was just perfect. Once again, guys, I, I really like this 18 mil. I have no cons to say. For a wedding, I literally, if I, I'm telling you, this is going to get glued on one of my cameras. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get one for myself, and I'm gonna <laughs> put it on my X-T2, and it's gonna stay there for the coming weddings. All right, the crucial couple shots. For this wedding, I unfortunately didn't have a lot of time because we're running out of time, and I managed to get the bride and groom out for five minutes. Um, no stress, huh? No stress. Five minutes to take the, group, the, the couple shots. Um, so I used the 110 with the, the GFX, and exclusively this one. Needless to say, this is the camera, the perfect camera for that. This is the camera you would use for a couple session, obviously. Uh, the depth of field was just amazing. It was very shallow, very detailed. Um, the, the blurry part was just, was just amazing. I mean, you can see in the photos here how good they look and um, have an idea for yourself how this would look for a wedding. Then we have the bouquet. I say it in French. I don't know if you guys call it differently in English. Maybe you call it the flower of the, the bride. I don't know. Anyway, so 
the lancer du bouquet, so when they throw the bouquet, um, I used the 18mm f1.4 exclusively for that. And guys, this shot, check this shot here. I love this particular shot because you can really, you can imagine with your head the, the circle going from the bride to the flowers when she threw it and it captures the moment that she's throwing it, it captures the emotions, it shows uh, people in the background ready to, ca to, to get those flowers and it, it just, it's just the right amount of stuff in the photo. And I could get close enough to not feel like an outsider at the other end of the goddamn garden but be close enough to really interact with them and that's what I like in weddings that's what I like to do I like to interact with people and be in communication with them so this lens again 10 out of 10 in my opinion last but not least we have the evening so when we go to the hall and people sit down they eat they chit chat there's games um, there is Usually the bride and groom say something uh, to open the evening. They then they open the dance floor. They do their first dance, and um, and for that I used 110 mil, which was great because I could go at the other end of the hall and take some cool shots. Uh, it is good for low light. It works great. Um, I usually l put it in auto and I let it go all the way to 12,800 uh, ISO. Uh, so I don't really care about that. And if there's too much noise, I convert it to black and white. So that was, that was perfect for that. And the 18 mil, once again, was great. I, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit here, but if you guys wanna know how it is for weddings, this is just perfect. If you're looking for a great setup for weddings that looks uh, very organic, that looks good, that feels great, the 18 mil is the lens for you. In terms of looks for my photo, I like the Kodak Portrait 400. That is the, the, my go-for look when I'm grading my photos. I sometimes use Portrait 800, depends on the shots. Sometimes I add a little vignette, but very seldomly. I like to leave them as they are, um, but that, that's for my grading, so it looks consistent. And I have a black and white um, preset that I created over the years, and that's what I use for my black and white shots. In terms of settings, I use lossless compress raw um, because it basically zips your raw file and when you put it in Lightroom, it unzips it, so you save a little bit of space on your SD card. Uh, I shoot raw and JPEG, small JPEG, so it's a few megs. It's just for me to have a little uh, thumbnail and know if I ever have to go back and find a photo, I can just rapidly scroll through, find my JPEG that I like, and then go and take the raw file. That's the, the reason. I back up, as I said, my photos on both SD card slots. So that's the mode that I use in case something goes wrong with an SD card, I still have the other one, which means that you need to think with, uh, if you do that with more, spa more space and more SD cards. All right, so in conclusion, what is my conclusion on the GFX 100S and the 18mm f1.4? So I think if you guys want to go for a GFX setup, I would go with two GFX cameras. I say two because I shoot with two cameras. I can't, I, I can't imagine shooting a wedding with one camera. It's, it, it would be impossible for me. So either you have both GFX cameras on both sides, and that's great, or um, I, would, I would honestly just get two XT cameras, X-Pro cameras, or... Uh, XS10 or whatever you want, but I wouldn't go with a GFX and an XT camera. That that wouldn't make sense, I think. But you can, you can totally shoot with this. The photos are gonna be gorgeous, they're gonna look great. If you have a computer that's fast enough to process all that information, it's great. It also depends on the type of client. Maybe you want to invest into something that will give you better results that you can then use for uh, the album, for posters, uh, for promotion, for whatever, you know? If you can get better photos, why not? Um, but I think the XTs, X Pros, I mean the, the Fuji uh, X Trends and uh, APS C sensor is just fantastic. So if you guys are trying to decide if you should go and shoot with a Fuji setup or not, I think you should. I think you should give it a go, give it a try. I personally have been shooting since 2014 with Fuji, so it's been many years that I switched from Canon. I never went back, never looked back, never regretted it. So yes, I think this setup works fine for weddings. All right, if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe. That helps me uh, grow this channel. Um, if you have any question, don't hesitate to write it down in the comment section below. And otherwise, I see you in my next video very soon. Bye-bye.